Welcome to the Faith Broadcast. Thank you for streaming this message. I believe this message will encourage you, it will inspire you, and it'll help you live the supernatural lifestyle of faith. We want you to live this supernatural lifestyle of faith, not have supernatural moments, but have it as a lifestyle. So we put all of this content out for you to receive so you can grow and live the life that Jesus made available for you. To find more information about our ministry and our resources, you can visit us at FCCGA.com or you can download our Faith Plus app. Our Faith Plus app has thousands of hours of faith building content and it's available in your app store right now. Open your heart. God's gonna share something special to you through this message. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a praise of gratitude. He's been better than good to us. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory, glory, glory to the Almighty God. For He is good and His mercy endures forever. Someone's shoulder is being healed right now. Go ahead and move that. You see Jesus just touched your shoulder. Go ahead and move it. He's already working in your body right now. And if you can tell a difference in your body, just wave at me and testify of his goodness. I see that hand. 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 He's a healing Jesus, and he's here with us right now. Something good is going to happen to you today. So expect miracles. Come on, say it with me. Say, something good is going to happen to me today. So I expect miracles. Go with me to Acts chapter 13 before we go back to praise and worship. Acts chapter 13. Stay standing with me. Acts chapter 13. We'll go back to praise and worship in one moment. But I want to read this to you so that you don't miss what God is going to do in you today. Acts chapter 13. Verse 1 says, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, starting with Barnabas and ending with Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit. And we'll stop there. So notice something. These ministry gifts came together. It seems like they sent something in their heart that God wanted to say something to them. So they took some special time to pray and to get before God. They took some extra time. Not just the normal time, not just normal Sunday, but they took some extra time. Like a Friday night for youth camp. Like a Saturday night session with Pastor Michelle last night. Like what we're going to do this morning. They took some extra time to hear from God. And as they gathered and ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost said. Now notice what he said. He said, separate them for the work I have already called them to do. So this wasn't a new call, but this was part of the call they haven't stepped out into yet. But because they took some extra time to before God, they were able to be launched out. Because it says they were sent by the Holy Ghost. Because it matters who sends you. Whoever sends you is responsible for paying the bill. Whoever sends you is responsible for taking care of you. Whoever sends you is responsible for every provision and everything you need. And the Holy Ghost has told us this is a summer of freedom. We're believing for things that have been holding us back for generations to fall off. But even more than that, we believe God is going to position us in such a way that we're going to see people come into this house. We're going to see Buddhists and Hinduists and Muslims and atheists and witches and warlocks come in, get saved, free, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We're believing we're going to be launched out to do what God has called us to do, to ignite an awakening that impacts Georgia and influences the world through the power of the love of Jesus. We believe the Holy Ghost has some things to say to us today. But notice he spoke it in an atmosphere where they were ministering to the Lord. And so before we go forward with praise and worship, as we minister to the Lord, 
open your hearts to hear from him. Because the Holy Ghost has anointed these ministry gifts that we have before us today. With Pastor David and Pastor Marcus, God has a message in them for you. But as you minister to the Lord, you're releasing your faith and your expectation, your hope, and you're opening yourself up to receive. For Jesus told us he will fill the hungry and the thirsty. John 7, he says, if you're thirsty, come and see me. Come and drink. He pours out his spirit on the thirsty. So I know I'm going to get what God has for me today. Look, it's not proper English, but I'm going to get mine. Now, if you do, that's up to you. Don't be the only one in here. Everybody else gets blessed. You just sitting on your row going, wow, that was nice. Because he meets the hungry. He meets the thirsty. He meets those who want something, who desire something, who believe that the almighty God can meet them at their point of need. It's called putting a demand on the anointing. And as you worship him, you put a demand. Because he says, I inhabit the praises of my people. So, you know, when we pray, we come into God's presence. But when we praise and worship, he comes into ours. And so I'm expecting his presence already here. I was driving here. I got a couple miles from the church, and the presence of God came in my car. And he's already here, but I expect more. For those who hunger and thirst shall be filled. So you have to stay hungry. Stay thirsty. So as we go into this next worship song, lift your hands and say, God, I want more. Come on, say, God, I want more. Say, God, I want more. Fill us to overflowing today, Father. We set our heart and our affection on you. We thank you that you are our shepherd. We thank you for taking care of us. We thank you for ministering to us. We're in expectation like they were in Antioch that day to hear from you to be launched out by you, to go forward into the futures you've planned for us. So we stand here in expectation of the glory of God. Rest upon us today, sir. Rest heavy upon us today. Hallelujah. Some of you in this room have been applying what it is that the Lord has been asking you to do over the last few weeks in regards to building your faith, releasing your faith, changing habits, changing um, some patterns in your life, and you've been doing it. You've been putting your hand to the plow. You've made the decision to say yes to God, and you've been doing it. But this week, you found yourself very tired. <laughs> very tired. It seems as if it is not working. And if we're really honest, we haven't really been doing it for that long, right? <laughs> it's not been that long, but it feels different, right? It feels different. Um, if you, for example, if you haven't if you didn't eat healthy before and you were given a report by the doctor that you need to change your eating habits because of health challenges, right? And you've been eating poorly for decades. And now all of a sudden you're starting. It's day one, it's day two. You're eating, you're eating broccoli. You're eating salad, right? <laughs> When you eat that salad or that piece of broccoli on that first day, you know what's not going to happen? Everything <laughs> that you did before is not going to all be undone when you ate that piece of broccoli on that very first day that you changed, you know, things. And so some of you in this room, you're like, I... I'm being obedient, but I don't see it instantaneously. And you feel how you feel. And I'm here today to encourage you not to be moved by your feelings, but to make choices based on the word of God. It takes consistency and it's patience. The Bible says that faith and patience inherits the promises of God. It's not that you haven't seen God's hand moving, you have. 
It's just this one thing that you're doing right now. This one thing is very difficult for you. You may even in your physical body be feeling uh, symptoms of uh, withdrawal. Just keep doing what it is that you're doing right now, what the Lord has instructed you to do, and don't stop. Just keep doing it. In time, it's going to get better. In time, you will not feel the same way, but even, even if you do feel anything, you never make choices based off of how you feel. You always make choices based off the Word of God, and the, word, the Lord has given you a specific word for your specific situation. And that word will bring you to not only the other side, but it'll, it'll, you'll be victorious, and not just in this area, in multiple areas, in many different areas of your life. So I get it. You don't feel good. I, I'm there with you. And I, this is, I don't almost ever feel <laughs> like doing what Jesus has asked me to do or feel good about it, but you, you don't choose to be moved by those feelings. And you keep going to that program. You keep eating uh, that way. You keep casting down wicked imaginations and replacing those thoughts with the word of God, no matter what that family member is saying. And for some of you, it is life or death, even if it's not immediate death, the longevity of your life, the Lord planned for you is to live a lot longer than you're thinking right now. He has to change your mentality about it, but you have to, you have to line up with his word. Pastor Kerrick has said this a few times, and I love every time he says it because it gives us a good idea of things. It says, God's perfect will is not automatic. It's not just going to come upon us. It is his will that you prosper and be in health to the measure that your soul prospers. That is his will, that you are healthy in your mind, that you are healthy in your body, that you are healthy in your soul, that you are healthy in your finances, that you are healthy in your marriage, that you are healthy in parenting and your relationships with your parents. That is his will. But it will not just come upon you. It will not just happen. You have a part. Your part is faith. And every single time faith is present, the power of God will meet your faith every single time without fail. So, so saint, I'm here to remind you and encourage you that this does matter. It is working. God is working. <laughs> God is working. And do not stop. Do not stop. Do not stop. Amen. Come on, who knows that God's going to work it out? I said, who knows that God's going to work it out? Doesn't matter what it looks like. Because we're faith people. We're not moved by circumstances. We stand on the promise no matter what it looks like. So can I get 20 people to just stand up on their feet and just give God a shout and a praise? Like you know he's going to work it out. As a matter of fact, it's already been worked out. There's no recession in heaven. Oh, uh, you didn't catch that. There's no recession in heaven. It's already been voted on by the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They said you are approved. And it's worked out in your favor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can sit down, if you can, in the house of the Lord. Oh, I'm so glad to be back with you, Faith Christian Center. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Hey, it's, it's been a minute, and I know I've been with you digitally a couple times, but, uh, but it's good to be back with you. It's just, it's so good to be back together, you know? I mean, I know, you know, for the past three years, different ministries have had different protocols and stuff, and you know, we've been together, maybe not, maybe digitally and virtually, but it's good to be together. The Bible said, come, let us assemble together. 
and don't forsake the assembly of the saints. And so praise God, you know, for those of you all who are in the house, house of God. And for those of you all who are digital online, that is not a statement of condemnation. We know that there is a big audience and that even if you're not here with us physically, you're here together with us in the spirit. Because there's no distance in the spirit, amen? amen. Praise God. Well, I am so grateful and thankful uh, for your pastors, Pastor Carrick, Lady Raquel. Can you put your hands together for them? Amazing leaders, amazing people, amazing pastors, even better friends. I thank you so much for your friendship. Thank you, Pastor Carrick, just for your friendship. You are, you are one of a kind. Your pastor is one of a kind. And, and I truly say this in all humility and sincerity. Your courage to be you encourages me. It encourages me. And, and it continues to remind me that God is counting on me to be me. God was counting on Pastor Carrick to be him. Because he knew what he put inside of him. I don't want to get ahead of myself and get too deep into the message. So let me just pull it back right there. I honor my good friend, Pastor Marcus. God, put your hands together for Pastor Marcus. Pastor Marcus Tankard. I get to be his John the Baptist today and prepare the way. So hopefully I can give you a word that's going to encourage you and uh, stir you up and leave you ready for more. So he can bring it on home and land this plane. Are you having a good time at the Faith Plus Conference? Praise God. It's good to be in a house of faith. I just, I feel like I'm at home when I'm in a house of faith. Honestly, you know, Pastor Carrick, there's some places that you go to minister and you feel like you're kind of starting from the ground and you have to kind of build and then you can kind of take off. But then there's some places that you feel like you're already in the air. <laughs> you're already in the air and we're just going to go higher from there. Amen. Praise God. Let me, uh, let me set my timer, because you know what they say, he was not long-winded, shall be invited back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, it was in 2009 that I took over uh, the youth ministry at my local church, Living Word Christian Center, the Go Hard for Christ Youth Ministry is what we named it. It was 2009 also that my father, he asked me to be over Bill Winston Ministries International. And Pastor Carrick, I thought that this was a mistake. I said, maybe this is a typo in the spirit. I don't really understand. It's okay, you can laugh, that was a joke. I don't feel bad. Um, I didn't think that I had what it took to be able to run the ministry, to be able to do ministry. I knew that God had a full-time calling on my life for ministry. I didn't want to be a pastor growing up, but God spoke to my heart my senior year at Oral Roberts University. Shout out to the Golden Eagles. Woo woo. And he spoke to my heart, called me in a full-time ministry. I said yes. So I thought I would be going into pastoral, you know, teaching ministry. So taking over youth ministry was kind of a logical next step, especially for a pastor's kid, a pastor's son. But when dad said, I want you to run Bill Winston Ministries, and he started talking about running conferences and, and running the business aspect of ministry, I said, what are you talking about? Now, I know you can hear from God, Dad, but maybe we should fast and pray a little longer on this one, because I don't know if we, we hit it on this one. But he was being obedient, because he knew that God had put something inside of me that I didn't even know existed at that moment. And for the first several years in ministry, I kind of struggled to find my own voice and my own footing, because here I am wrestling with how am I going to do what God has called me to do, what dad is asking me to do, but also be who I'm supposed to be? Because as I got older and continued more in ministry, I actually discovered something that's, you know, pretty simple. I'm not my dad. I might look a little like him. I might sound a little like him at times. <laughs> I can imitate him. But yet, I am not him. I am not Bill Winston. And for the first several years of ministry, I struggled with that reality. But then God said something very specific to me one morning as I was praying. 
He confirmed my suspicions by saying, David, you could never do what your dad was called to do. And I said, okay, well, thank you, Holy Ghost, for that morning jolt of confidence. That's exactly what I was looking for. But then what he said next changed my whole paradigm. He said, and your dad couldn't do what you've been called to do because I've equipped you in a way that's specifically tailored for the purpose to which I've called you to. You've been looking at this thing the wrong way. You've been looking at who you aren't and what you don't have instead of who you are and what you do have. And I started to get this revelation, and especially, and I'm so glad to be around, you know, second generation leaders and pastors' kids doing amazing things in ministry, because I think a lot of times, you know, we can be intimidated by the call. And, and I know that, you know, not everybody in here is pastors' kids, but you're not unlike me. God has spoken to you some things to do, and sometimes you may not feel like you have what it takes to do what God has called you to do. Maybe there's one person in here who says, God, I don't know if you've given me the right assignment. Do you know who I am? You know where I come from? You know how small my town is? Like the whole church goes, the whole town goes to church. <laughs> you know, like, like you, you know, sometimes we can be in those places and those spaces that we start to discount our own greatness. But today I want to talk to you for the next 35 minutes on the subject titled, The Courage to Be Great. The Courage to Be Great. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us. I ask, Father, that you would think through my mind and speak through my lips, that the Word of God would come out unhindered and unchecked by any outside force. I thank you, Lord, that the seed of the ministry of the Word of God would go into every heart and bear forth much good fruit. Now I decrease that you may increase. I step back that you may step forward. And we decree and declare signs, wonders, and miracles in confirmation of the Word of God preached here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go with me to John chapter 15 and verse 16. I want to start just at this scripture. John chapter 15 and verse 16. It says this, you did not choose me, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. If you're writing notes, I want you to write this down this morning. If you're not writing notes, I advise you to write some notes because there's some good wisdom and revelation. I'm sure that's going to come out of the ministry of not just myself, but Pastor Marcus as well. You are God's best candidate and first choice for the purpose to which he's called you to. You are God's best candidate and first choice, not second, not third, not last choice. You are God's first choice for the calling and the purpose to which he's called you to. And as I've gone on my own journey and helped people through their journey, it actually led me to write a book that it's taken me over seven years to finally release this. But God wouldn't give up on me, even though I tried to give up on it. God wouldn't give up on me. He said, no, no, you got to release this. You got to write this because this is my message to the body of Christ that I've given you. And that book is called Authentic, The Confidence to Be Yourself, The Courage to Release Your Greatness. And I want to talk to you out of something that I put in that book today. And I'm actually, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a book signing uh, afterwards. And so please join me. I would love to be able to uh, sign a book if you would like to get one. I believe that it's really going to help you and bless you. But it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we are God's workmanship, his own handiwork. That word workmanship in the Greek is poema. Can you guess what word we get in the English from poema? Poem. And it actually translates masterpiece, crowning artistic achievement. You are God's masterpiece. His handwriting is all over your life. And he has uniquely equipped you and designed you for a purpose in this life. And there are some things that God wants you to do to advance your kingdom. But what I found out is that we'll be reluctant to do them if we don't think we're the right person for the job. If we don't think we look the part, sound the part, 
maybe have the right education or the right background or the right family history or have the right connections or the right amount of money in the bank account. And we start to discount our own unique genius. But what I'm here to do is give you your significance back. I'm here to remind you of who you are in Christ. There's a word that has been stirring all weekend, Pastor Carrick, in my spirit, and I'm going to get to it in a little bit. But this word influence, influence, it just keeps stirring. Every time I'm praying for this meeting this morning, this word influence keeps coming back up, and God has given me a word, and I'm going to release it at the right time this morning. But this word influence, and I believe God wants us to have good influence, right? He wants us to have influence, not just in the church world. He wants us to have influence in the world for the kingdom. How many of you all know that God wants us to have influence in industry and in culture and in different mountains uh, and spheres of, of, of the world and of culture? That's what God wants for us. But this morning, I want to talk to you from the story of David. I have an affinity for David. We have the same name. But I want to talk to you about the story of David because a whole nation was saved because a teenage boy didn't divert from the plan of God. He didn't discount himself, who he was or what he had to offer. And in Psalms, or excuse me, in um, 1 Samuel chapter 16, we see that Samuel, the prophet Samuel, he's come to, uh, to Jesse's house. And when he comes to Jesse's house, he's come to anoint the next king. And he says, Jesse, bring your boys in this house. I'm here to anoint the next king. And I can see Jesse right now. Oh, yes. Oh, this is good. My, my son's going to be the next king. And so he brings his sons in the house. He's got eight sons. He bring, brings seven of the sons in the house. So he starts with Eliab, the biggest, tallest, and most handsome of the bunch. You know, kind of looks like me, I understand. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And so he stands by him, and God says, this isn't him. Goes to the next son. This isn't him. This isn't him. This isn't him. He gets to the end, and there's no more sons. And he says, Jesse, do you have any more sons? Because he's not here. And I know I've been sent on assignment. And Jesse says, well, I got one more. He's out in the field. But I didn't call him in because I know it can't be him. Now, here's David set to do great things in this life and in his life. But his own family didn't even believe he was significant. I feel like we can stop right there and learn a message that even if your family discounts you, that doesn't stop the plan and purpose of God in your life. So now David comes into the house. Jesse calls him reluctantly. Hey, David, come on in. We got prophet Jesse. You know, he's looking for the next king, but he asked for you. And then Samuel comes in. And what God says is this. Don't look on his outward ex uh, exterior or appearance because I look at the heart. This is the next king. Small, young shepherd boy. He's not a warrior, at least yet at that moment. I don't know if he looked very kingly, but God had chosen him. He was a musician. He was a heart player. And you know, I know the scripture doesn't talk about this, but it's interesting that Jewish historical texts and the Talmud and some other things talk about um, some potential background and context to David's story and, and that David's father and brothers thought that he potentially could have been the result of an extramarital affair of his mom, giving them some kind of reason and giving us some kind of level of understanding as to which why his father and his brothers might have treated him with such disdain that they did. And so I'm not here to go through all of that. That's kind of a complicated story, but it, it, it wasn't the result of an affair. But this gives us some context because he felt like an outcast. He felt like someone who was kind of on the outs. And I don't know if anybody in here can relate that you feel like an outcast even in your own home. But that didn't stop God's plan. So fast forward to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 4. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, 
whose height was six cubits in a span. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. And so let's fast forward through the story. David comes to bring food to his brothers. And then he comes and he hears this Goliath shouting these taunts and these insults. And he said, well, hold on. Y'all going to take this? Y'all just going to let him just insult y'all like this? And so he starts to inquire. And his brothers didn't like it. They said, what are you doing here? Go back home. Nobody wants you here. Leave. We'll take the Chick-fil-A, though. <laughs> but something starts stirring in David because this battle starts calling out to him. Nobody asked him to fight Goliath. Nobody even put it in his heart, but yet something starts calling out to him. And he says, well, what will they get if they defeat this Goliath? And pretty soon Saul hears about it. And King Saul, he calls to David and, and sends for David. And, and in verse 32 of chapter 17, then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. This is crazy, David. What are you about to do? You're about to get yourself killed. And I'm going to look like a bad king because I'll let you do it. But there's three things this morning that I want us to learn from David's story. And I know that this is one of the most talked about in most popular well-known stories from the Bible, but there's three things that I want to point out that might be a little different than you've understood before. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38, the scripture goes on to say, so Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head, and he also clothed him with a coat of mail. And David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off, and then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag and a pouch, which he had. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So he's coming to Saul. Saul says, at least let me give you some armor. At least let me help you. Let me equip you. Because you don't get yourself killed if you go out there like that. So let me give you this armor. Now, the Bible said that Saul stood head and shoulders among the rest and above the rest. And so I like to think that he was real tall. Maybe he was a big guy. Think of like a LeBron James, right? 6'8", built. So Saul's armor was going to be fashioned for his frame. But David was a small guy. He wasn't as big as Saul. And so imagine him putting on this armor that was fit and tailor-made for Saul, but was not made for David. So he's got this big old armor. He's trying to lug it around. He's got this giant sword. And the Bible says something very specific. He had not tested them. See, Saul was trying to equip David for a battle the way he would be equipped. God had a different idea. And so here we go. We have David. He has a sling in one hand, and he's got a sword in the other. And I can see him going through his head saying, wait a minute. This is crazy, but I, I got the sling, the thing I've always used, but it doesn't make any sense. But I, I got the sword, the thing I've never used, but it makes the most sense. I got something that I'm used to using, but I got something that I don't usually use. I got something that makes a lot of sense for me, but then I got something that makes a lot of sense for the soldiers. And he's going back and forth, and he's saying, Yo, what do I do? And then I hear the inner witness probably speak to him. God says to him, go back to what you know. Go back to what you know. And that brings me to my first point, because I can hear David saying, well, this sling is all I have. This doesn't look like much to defeat a giant that everybody is running from. We got soldiers who've been trained from war. They're strong. They're mighty. They got armor. And all I have is a sling. And I can hear God saying, all you have is all you need. 
All you have is all you need. How many times do we go through life and we're busy trying to tell God what we don't have? What God needs to give us, what God needs to do, the connections maybe we don't have or the resources we don't have or, or the proper formal training that we don't have. We're so busy telling God what we don't have that we're ignoring what we do have. And what he's saying about what you do have is all you have is all you need. And how significant was this? So David goes to the battlefield. He's got a sling. He's got his stones. And he's starting to walk up, and Goliath is taunting him. And he's like, wait a minute, you come to me with a stick? Like I'm, uh, like I'm a dog here? I mean, like, what is this? All you got is a shepherd's bag and a, a pouch and a sling. <laughs> you don't even have any armor. And what does David say? He said, this day the Lord shall deliver you into my hands. And he not only said he's, he's going to defeat him, he said he was going to cut his head off. Now, Pastor Marcus if I read the scripture in the text, he doesn't say that he has a sword. As a matter of fact, he refused the sword. So if he's going to cut his head off, it's only going to be by one sword, the sword that's right there on the battlefield, by Goliath's sword. So this man is saying, not only am I going to defeat you, I'm going to cut your head off with your own equipment. Now, now that sounds like confidence to me, right? David wasn't scared. Say, I'm not scared. Turn to your neighbor, say, I'm not scared. Turn to your other neighbor, the good looking one, say, I'm not scared. Husbands, don't get in trouble. Just look at your wife. She's the good looking one. So he wasn't scared, and there's a reason for that. So if you study history, and especially Jewish history, you'll start to understand that slings and stones were actually the weapon of choice for shepherds back at that day. That's what they used to protect their sheep. As a matter of fact, what they called them was slingers, people who are really good and really experienced at slinging stones. They would get so good that they could hit a target 200 yards away. They could hit a bird in mid-flight. They can uh, sling a stone over 100 miles per hour. And those stones that he got in the Valley of Agilon, those things were so dense that when he would sling it going over 100 miles an hour, it had the stopping power of a 45 millimeter handgun. The Bible says that the stone didn't just hit Goliath, it sunk in his head. Now, when he's going out to the battlefield all alone with just this sling, he looks like a fool to the rest of the people. But David is so confident because he's experienced with this stone and sling. He knows what to do with this stone and sling. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't have to get close to Goliath with the stone and sling. He can hit him from 30, 40, 50 yards out. So he's over here making these bold declarations because he's thinking, Goliath, I'll never even get close enough for you to launch your weapon at me. You can't even, you won't even be able to throw your javelin at me. You won't even touch me because I got the goods. But get this, David was the only one at that battlefield who could defeat Goliath. And his difference it wasn't a deficiency. His difference led to victory because he had what it took to win the battle. Now let's apply that to you. The way you think, your passions, your gifts, your unique genius, the way you create, your demeanor, the way God created you, even the way you look, the way you talk, the way you process, that's what God wants to expose. Because you've been custom crafted for such a time as this. And God is counting on what's inside of you to make the difference. In your family, in your home, in your business, in your industry, he's counting on what is inside of you to be the difference maker. And you might say, what's inside of me is not like what's inside of other people. Good. God's counting on it. Because all you have is all you need. The courage to be great is about being who God has called you to be in the middle of adversity. Now notice, nobody asked David to do it. He volunteered for the job. 
God is not going to force his will on you, and he's not going to force you to take advantage of opportunities. You have to volunteer for the job. This is a walk of faith, not a walk of feelings. Ooh, let me say that again. This is a walk of faith. It's not a walk of feelings. You say, well, I don't, I don't feel like I'm the right person for the job. I feel like I'm under-equipped and ill-qualified. I feel like I'm in over my head. Good, because when you are weak, he is strong. God will always put you in situations, places, and spaces that creates a dependency for him, not an independency from him. So you know you're being led by God when you are in over your head. Because he has cultivated inside of that opportunity. He's created inside of that opportunity the necessity to depend on him. That's faith. Come, come on, Faith Christian Center. So we volunteered for the job, which leads me to my second point. Being faithful in obscurity will lead to victory publicly. Being faithful in obscurity will lead to victory publicly. What was David doing? He was out there tending the sheep. He was out there being a shepherd. He was out there in obscurity. I can see him. He was getting bored. He would play his harp. He would play his guitar. You know, maybe he would uh, shoot and throw rocks and practice as a slinger hitting trees with rocks. And, and I could just see him just kind of being out there feeling like he's forgotten, feeling like he's in obscurity. I mean, you see the prophet Samuel came over and his dad didn't even call him in the house. So he's feeling like he's kind of just out there. But he wasn't out there just doing nothing. He was out there learning. Because notice, he was taking care of sheep, right? But when he came to the battlefield, he had actually mastered protecting other beings. So when he was protecting the sheep, he didn't even know that he was growing his ability to be a protector. So when he got to the battlefield, he just saw a different kind of sheep being intimidated by a different kind of enemy. And when he got there, he said, wait a minute. This is the same thing I was doing in obscurity. The situation's a little different. The players are a little different. It's not a lion or a bear, it's a Goliath. But if I took the lion and the bear, I can take this Goliath. It's the same thing. And the same God is with me. So because he was faithful in obscurity, it led to victory publicly. Do not ever forsake what you are learning in obscurity. And I know we live in this, this, this uh, culture, we live in this society, right, where everybody wants to be an influencer. Everybody wants to be known and, and seen, especially for our younger generations. And if we're not careful, we can let that trick us into thinking that when I'm less known, things are less important. But that's not how God does. Because God says, if you want to be the greatest in this kingdom, you must be the least. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to be a servant of all. See, the way up is down. And sometimes people look down on, on these opportunities that they feel like are less than, or are more obscure, or, or are beneath them. But what I tell them is, be careful how you treat people in obscurity because your promotion is wrapped in your faithfulness to the obscure season. I didn't learn how to be a good steward of ministry just by having a mic. I learned how to be a good steward of ministry by a mop and a broom and a vacuum. Because when I was 15 years old, I was cleaning the church. I was vacuuming the same stage that I preach on now. But my heart to be able to make sure that this ministry experience was excellent didn't start by being well known, being on a microphone, getting a bunch of people to retweet me or repost my nice quotes or, or my nice little clips and things. It didn't start there. It started
Nobody was there and nobody cared, but God was building something in me. What is God doing in you in your obscure season? What is he building in you? What is he creating in you? He's wanting to see, are you going to be faithful when nobody knows you and you feel like nobody cares? When nobody knows your name, you say, wait a minute, I got books in me. I got bestsellers in me. But I ask you a question. Will you be faithful with the obscure season? Pastor Marcus, I started preaching to youth, and we were in the middle of a warehouse with about 15 of us. Ain't no social media, wasn't no recordings. We barely had a keyboardist, bless his heart. But that's where I started. But it wasn't about me being known. It was about ministering to his young people. And I tell you the truth, for the first seven years of my ministry, and or ministering to people, God told me not to accept any speaking engagements. People heard that, oh, Bill Winston's son, and now he's, you know, preaching and minister. We're going to invite him out to this, invite him out to that, and invite him out to this festivity and this conference. God said, no. And you know what he said? Build my house, not your kingdom. And a lot of us in our generation, we're trying to get put on. We are so consumed with trying to find the biggest stage that we forget it's about serving people off the stage. This is just a platform for service. Ministry is not about how good I preach or how many people like my post. Ministry is about people. You even tr translate that, uh, that Greek word ministry, it actually it translates service. I got to finish up. Let's keep going. God is preparing you privately. Don't worry about trying to get noticed or recognized. When the moment comes, just be ready. Just be ready. Number three, my... my my final point, and then I want to mention something else. In the midst of all this, we have to remember, God chose the right person for the assignment. He chose the right person for the assignment. David wrote this as he had a revelation in Psalms chapter 139 and verse 14. I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. What is your soul? Your mind, will, and emotions. So David had to make sure that his soul was informed that the works of God are marvelous and I am one of God's works. He had to make sure that he de didn't devalue his significance. That you and I were unique and God did not get it wrong when he created you. He did not create you deficient. You are not mistakenly born. There is no way to sneak into the back door of earth. And as a matter of fact, God was so successful in creating you that when he stopped creating you, he stopped creating yous. You are one of one. You are one of one. Now, why do we treat things that are one of one with such significance in society, but yet we devalue our own unique one of oneness? We value limited edition sneakers, limited edition Rolexes, limited edition cars, one of 10, one of 100, one of 1,000. We value all these different kinds of external things, but when it comes to you as one of one by the master creator, we say, oh, well. <laughs> oh man so what are your giants they could be opportunities maybe they could be problems that you're facing maybe personal, cultural, regional I believe this giants are facilitators of discovery giants are facilitators of discovery what are you discovering? you're discovering what's in you what's in you what did God put in you? And I ministered this um, on Friday to our youth. In order for greatness to be exposed, it needs a force. In order for greatness to be exposed, 
it needs a force. Um, hey, the young man that was back there that carried my bag, can you come up here? Yeah, 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 I, I need your help just for a second. You were the chosen armor bearer for the day. So I'm going to let you keep bearing arms. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What's your name? Trenton. Trenton. All right. Thanks, Trenton. I want you to hold this. And this is toothpaste. I'm sure you used this this morning. <laughs> so this toothpaste, you can verify that it's toothpaste. It's in there. Okay. And so what I want you to do is hold it just like this. So if you use toothpaste this morning, you're familiar with how toothpaste works. And like most toothpaste, this toothpaste is very similar. I want you to face the people. I want you to pull this down just a little bit, a little bit of separation. There you go. So the toothpaste doesn't just fall out, right? You can yell at it. You can scream at it. You can just wait for it. But it doesn't just fall out. Most toothpaste need an external force to push it out. Now it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says this, Now to him who is able to do it exceedingly abundantly, more than we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. So there is a truth that there's a power that works in us. There's Holy Ghost power. God has put some things inside of you. But then there's also an exceedingly abundantly that we can get to, but it, we need some help. And the help comes from the Lord. But this is how the help comes. He will allow us to be in situations that seem and feel hard to our natural thinking, but really it is God allowing us to be exposed to us. So what God will do is he won't just, you know, bring us in a situation and let us be comfortable. You know, we just here, just sitting, standing. He'll actually put us in a situation where we feel the pressure of life squeezing us and our, 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 our temptation, Trenton, is to run from it, right? We don't want to be uncomfortable. But God says, don't run. Stay and depend on me. Because not only is God a deliverer, he's also an exposer of what's inside of us. So God will say, no, no, stay in that position because I need you to see something. And I want you, Trenton, to squeeze that. Oh, look at that. What's in the toothpaste and toothpaste tube only comes out when a force is put on it. Potential is like toothpaste. It doesn't just fall out. It has to be squeezed out. It has to be pushed out. What is potential? It's hidden ability. What is potential? It's unused success. I like to call potential concealed greatness. But you can't get to the greatness being exposed that's inside of you if you're running from the hard things of life. God says, write a book. Write the book. You say, I didn't even graduate from high school. I failed English class. God didn't ask you about excuses. God asked you to write the book so you can expose bestseller potential. Start the business. You say, I don't have any business background and I don't know anybody who owns their own business. God said, I didn't ask you about what you're familiar with. I asked you to start the business because I need some things to happen in this earth and I need to see and need you to see the potential that's inside of you. And so he'll squeeze us. And I want you to keep squeezing because until pressure is applied, potential remains hidden, even from you. But pressure releases greatness. Pressure can be adverse conditions. Pressure can be uh, uh, having us to tap into a level of creativity, ingenuity, strength, courage, and genius that we wouldn't have been able to reach without the force of the struggle. The courage to release your greatness is the ability to withstand the force of the struggle that forces you to become better. Or can we say it this way? It forces you to become greater. Now, we know what the Bible says, that God cannot tempt with evil, right, Trenton? He doesn't tempt us with evil. 
He is a deliverer. He's going to deliver us up out of everything. It says in the Bible that there's no temptation that has come unto you such as common to man. But God is faithful that with the temptation, he will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That way of escape is seen through the eyes of faith. So we know God is not tempting with evil. He will make a way of escape, but he needs you to learn something first. Oftentimes, we'll discover something about ourselves. Or he'll have us almost volunteer for the battle. Right? You get married, and maybe you're kind of anxious about having kids because you didn't have good parents growing up, estranged from your parents. And so God is working through you and with you, but there's this fear that I won't be a good parent either. But family situations often can push potential out of us so we can see God's goodness and faithfulness show up in our lives and we can discover who we are in Christ. Thank you so much, Trenton. I appreciate it. You can take that with you. The demand or pressure on your potential, it may come from school, it may come from job, it may come from an assignment, it may come from a leadership position, it may come from a promotion, it may come from the birth of a new organization or business, it may come from ministry or volunteering or writing a book or creating art or music or getting married or becoming a parent, but potential is really hidden greatness waiting to be exposed. And it says in John chapter 14 and verse 12, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. God has given you a very specific assignment through the ministry of Jesus to continue the work that Jesus started. So we can't be fearful and trying to pull back. We can't be fearful and trying to, uh, um, trying to shrink back and be discouraged because we don't know how people will receive us or what people will say about us or if we have what it takes to be great. Now, this is the word that God gave me, Pastor Carrick. And this is what he spoke to me this morning in prayer. There's somebody who's been caught up in false humility. You are too humble to be great. But it's not humility, it's fear. The phrase he gave me, the, the sentence he gave me, and I'm going to use a, a, a college word. <laughs> you've abdicated. Abdicated means you've relinquished power. You've abdicated your influence and called it humility. Humility. And you may be too afraid of too many eyes and too much attention on you, but your success is good for God. It was never about you. And when your greatness is released, it validates God's promise and his goodness. It shows people God's supernatural power that is at work in your life. When you don't have a degree, in a field, but yet you're dominating that industry? People are trying to figure out how in the world are you doing this? But God has called you and he's marked you for such a time as this. It says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 2, when he said this to Abraham, and we know that the blessing of Abraham is on us, and so we can take part in that same blessing, but he said, I will make your name great. I will make you famous and distinguished. And you'll be a blessing to others. He said, I will bless you. That word bless in the Hebrew is barak. It actually means empowered to succeed. And I will make your name great. God has always planned for your name to be great. Because you're going to make him known through what he's doing through you. I like what Dr. Martin Luther King says. He says, not everyone can be famous, but everyone can be great because greatness 
is determined by service. You're going to serve the world with your gift, with your ability. There's only one person in the world like you. And God is counting on you to step up and take back your influence. To not shrink back or stand down, but in the day of adversity to stand tall because there's giants in the land. And he's counting on you as you stand up that the greater one inside of you stands up even taller. And that anointing, that power, that potential inside of you starts to come out and you'll start to shake things in culture. You start to shake things in industry. You take your influence back. And you say, God, I know you can use me to do something great. No matter who I am, where I'm from, what background I have, even the little opportunity that I do have, I'm going to glorify you with it. I'm going to be faithful in every season of obscurity. I'm going to know that all I have is all I need. And I'm going to do it for your glory. I'm going to live a life that pleases you. And so, Pastor Carrick, I made a decision that I'm going to be exactly who God has called me to be. No matter what anybody thinks or says, I'm going to do things differently than others might have done them. I might think differently. I might be different. But that's okay. Because there's power in my difference. Because God is counting on the real me to show up in every opportunity and in every situation. Come on, stand up to your feet with me. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Put your hands together and just receive the word. I believe that Pastor Marcus, he's going to help wrap this up. But I know that God is doing some great things in this house. And I believe that there's an amplification of your influence, Pastor Carrick and Lady Raquel that's coming because of your faithfulness, your faithfulness to this house, your faithfulness and dedication to teach faith, even to our generation and beyond. And I believe the same is happening for many of you. Don't lose hope. Don't get weary. I love the prophetic songs we were singing because that's the truth. Change is coming. Good things are coming. And we're going to see God do some miracle signs and wonders in this house and in your life. Praise God. Thank you so much. God bless you. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Come on, celebrate his name. Come on, celebrate his name. Celebrate his name. Come on, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run in and be saved. Come on, can be healed, can be delivered, can be set free. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, his presence is just so saturated the room this morning. And your impossibility is now encountering a flow of answers. A flow of answers. A flow of answers. He's here to answer that thing that's working in your body. Whatever that may be. Please be aware, he is among us. So, you know, you don't even necessarily need me to touch you. You just need to touch him. So can we just, there's that anointing right there. Can we just take just a couple moments? Come on, and you just pull on what heaven is offering us this morning. Glory to God. Come on, pull on what heaven is offering this morning. Yeah, yeah, because there's movement here. Yeah, for the assignment. For the assignment. There's movement here that would add additional equipment for what he's calling you to do. There's movement here for that. Come on, but you've got to aggressively pull on that this morning. Hallelujah. Someone here, you've got problems with skin issues in your scalp. There's, there's movement for that. That the anointing of God would move your direction and heal that issue. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that all types of allergic issues in your skin. Someone here specifically that, that's being harassed with things like hives. Another individual that, that breaks out in awful rashes with bug bites. Yeah, hallelujah. That individual with those issues in your gut gut issues, digestive issues. Yeah, there's liberty for that. You can be free of that and it never come back. And it never come back. Hallelujah. I'm not in a hurry. We'll just wait. I want to give you an opportunity to receive. I'm not going to rush beyond this moment here. Strength to your bones. Strength in your bones. Strength in your bones. Hallelujah. Yeah, in your knees. Strength in those knees. Strength in those knees. Strength in those knees. Strength in those knees. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that his presence would recreate things as we're standing here this morning recreating and reorganizing parts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's here to help you this morning. You hear what I said? He's here to help you this morning. He's here to help you. He's here to help you. And aren't you grateful for the flow of the Holy Ghost? You know, when you know, the Holy Spirit is called the helper. So when he's moving, he's helping. Yeah, when he's moving, he's helping. So we have to be careful to embrace the totality of his ministry. Not just in us, but among us. Because when he is moving, come on, he's helping. And wouldn't it be an awful thing for help to come in the room and you leave without it? Oh, but not this morning. Oh, not this morning. Not this morning. We're receiving big. We're receiving miracles. We're receiving signs, wonders, healings. Come on. Wisdom, counsel, insight, impartations. We're receiving favor. We're receiving opportunity. We're receiving interest into all God has authored for our lives. So that even corporately now, as a church, as a body, we corporately move into what is next. Hallelujah. We corporately move. We have abundant entrance into the next of our God. You say, I don't even know what that's looked like. Well, that's why it takes faith. Because your senses will never be able to keep up with what the Holy Ghost is doing. You just follow. Amen. Well, I'm so glad to be here with you guys. I am going to put a cap on this. I'm so grateful for Pastor Carrick. I tell you, he is he's just an invaluable asset to me and my family. You know, you love everybody, but if we're honest about it, there's some people that we like more than others. I'll let you read in between the lines. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I'm just, I'm so glad that, you know, I can love Pastor Carrick, but I, I like him too. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Carrick, you know, he was a, a, has been, but specifically when I was receiving my miracle, um, he, he was, don't do that. Don't, see, I'm trying Okay, because this time last year, it wasn't like this. This time last year, it wasn't like this. But God, who is rich in mercy, God, who is a healer, God, who is the miracle worker, who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, interrupted the ordinary course of nature.
Oh, he did it. Oh, he did it. Oh, he did it. He did it. I'm not telling you something I read. I'm telling you something that I know. Telling you something that I know. That at the name, okay, I feel real good right there. That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's not just a thought. He's not just an experience. No, he is Lord. And there is no other name by which man can be saved. And so, yeah, cancer's just a name. It's just, it's just, just a name. And he has proved his faithfulness to me. And he has proved his faithfulness to a Hindu doctor. In that, the doctor says, the only way that I would know that you had cancer would be to look at your scans from well over a year ago. He said, and I quote, is as if it was never there. So can't nobody tell me, come on, can't nobody tell me what God can or cannot do. I know, I know, I know. And if he did it for me one time, he can do it this morning. If he did it for me one time, he can do it this morning. He can drive cancer out of this room. He can drive lupus out of this room. He can drive heart issues out of this room. That problem that's working in your lungs, he can drive it out, drive it out, drive it out, drive it out, out. I'm trying. I'm trying because I got to show you that I can teach, but I feel something moving through here. See, when you know, you just know. And so, Pastor Carrick. He wasn't just one of those that said, well, I'll just pray for you from over here. Good luck. (laughs) That wasn't the type of supply that his friendship provided for us. No, he was there. And I remember when it got got dark for a minute. And um, I I had to leave work and everything, take time off from work and from our businesses or whatever. And one day I was at the house and... um, I wasn't even dressed. (laughs) And heard the doorbell, and I walked to the door, and there was Carrick standing there. It matters who's in in your corner when you need a miracle. Carrick flew in that morning. He said, I only have a few hours, but I'm here to see about you. And he sat there with me, and we talked the word, we talked faith, and we spent some time praying. And he said, okay, I'm going home. I said, now? He said, yeah, I just flew in to spend a few hours with you. I'm getting back on the plane to go back. Who does that? (laughs) Pastor Carrick. That's who. And it was because of faith-filled friends like that that I won. I won and I am winning. So just take 30 seconds and give God praise for Pastor Carrick this morning. So grateful for you. So grateful for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated for a moment.
One of the things that I feel like I've really been tasked to do here recently is to help us understand just, you know, the body of Christ, to understand the things of the Spirit, and to help us be more skillful in it. You know, you can be skillful or more skillful in a thing. Um, like, for instance, how many of you know people that are not skilled at cooking? <laughs> we love them. <laughs> they are valuable to the ministry of Christ, but they're just, <laughs> they're not very skillful in that anointing. <laughs> And so many times I find with um, some of us Word of Faith people, we're very skillful in faith. Come on, we're the name it and claim it, blab it and grab it, spit it and get it, folk. I, I nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, some of my, my friends nicknamed me Captain Confession because I'm all of us, say this, say this, say this after me, you know. You may do a little bit of that this morning. You know, so I'm all for it. But you can be skilled in faith, and if you're not skilled in the things of the Spirit, you will miss when manifestation is catching up to your confession. Because you may know how faith works, but you don't know how God is going to work the miracle. We know how faith works. We know how to speak to the mountain. But sometimes we don't know how God is going to move the miracle. We don't know how God is going to manifest healing in our bodies. We know he's, he's already done it. We're waiting on manifestation, but we don't know how that manifestation is going to make a great ap appearing in our lives. We know that God supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory, but many times we don't recognize money when it's moving into our lives. So that gap there is being skilled in the things of the Spirit because you want to be able to cooperate with what God is doing. You don't want to be found in opposition to what he's bringing into your life just because you don't know how he's moving. And so in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, I'll read this out. And I, wanna, I believe this will put a good cap on this this morning. Paul's writing there to the church at Thessalonica, and he said, Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and perfect that which is lacking in your faith. He says, we so desire to see you because the assignment that we have we want to see your face so we can perfect what is lacking in your faith. Can I say this, that your faith is incomplete if you don't have faith to follow the Spirit? Many of us have faith to receive, but we don't have faith to follow. Let me say that one more time. We have faith to receive, but we don't have faith to follow. Can I tell you that the miracle you are believing God for is going to call, call on you to do some things you've never done before? It's going to call on you to move into some areas that you're not aware of right now. God said to me one time, he said, Marcus, I will open doors you never knew were there. And so I said to him, well, I, I need you to help me know where the door is then. It's like the one I'm standing in front of right now is not opening for me. So if there's a door you're going to open, I would like for you to, di to di direct me to the door. And so Paul says, we want to be there with you to help you fill in the gaps. So because on the outside, you're doing everything right, but you're still coming up short. And he says, there's some things working in you that have been there a long time. And it's been there way too long. Hmm? You've been sick too long. You've been in that tax bracket too long. You've been dreaming and daydreaming about, the, about that business, about the, the nonprofit, whatever that may be. You've been doing that too long. And he says, so I need to come by and I need to bring an impartation that will help you fill in 
the gaps. He said to perfect your faith. Everybody say perfected faith. faith. It's possible to have faith, but your faith not be perfect. Perfected faith requires some assembly. Perfected faith requires some assembly. You probably heard that term maybe around Christmas time when you're putting together a bike for your kid. I got three boys, so I've done this quite a few times now. Putting together that bike, and you know, you open up the box, you know, and right there on the instructions, you know, it says some assembly required. You just can't just, you know, put a collection of, of those pieces there just on a pile and presto change, oh, you, you have a bike. It doesn't say gathering is required. No, it says assembly. It, somebody get that tomorrow. You don't, you don't just gather all the pieces. No, you have to assemble them, meaning everything must be in its rightful place. Paul said that there's something I desire to pass to you that I can't put on Facebook. You know, what I have to pass to you, I need to be present with you. Let me, let me tell you something. I have a, a, a mass online community, pastoring an online church. I believe in online ministry. But the virtual space will never replace this space. It's not either or, it's both. Partially, I believe, because the gifts of the Spirit are activated sometimes when I can see your face. You know, you, uh, Pastor David gave the example earlier of the prophet going to Jesse's house, right? And, um, you know, he didn't know which individual was going to be anointed to be king until that person came before him. And it activated the gifts of the Spirit. And he said, no, not you. Ah, no, no, not you. But when he saw David, come on, that same operation came into manifestation, and he knew this is the one. This is next. Or this is who is next. You know, so you don't get that at home. Can I say this to you? There's a manifestation of him among us that we don't get back at the house. He's in you. And he's with you. But he said, wherever two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he says, I am there, meaning there is a manifestation, there is an expression of him, there's an impartation of him that you get when we are here that you don't get while you're praying in the bathroom or while you're praying in the car or while you're doing the laundry. Do you understand what I'm saying? Perfected faith requires some assembly. And so Paul being an apostle, I'm, I'm just using my deductive reasoning here, that there is an apostolic ingredient that will perfect your faith. There's something within that apostolic mantle that will bring your faith to perfection. How? It will adjust you. Maybe you're doing the right thing, but the wrong way. It will stretch you. Hmm? Recently, I started um, doing kickboxing, right? You know, just in case I need to, you know. <laughs> I told you there's some people I like more than others. <laughs> right? Kickboxing is for the others. Anyway, so... <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm beating up people. You know, I'm not, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not doing that. And one of the things that my, that, that my coach would tell me, he says, you're doing the right thing, but your stance is wrong. Your posture is wrong. You know, you can be saying the right thing out of your mouth, but if you're not postured for increase, you won't receive it. And so you need somebody that is more skilled in it than you are to come alongside and help to adjust you, correct you, establish you, and launch you. That's what the apostolic does. 
And there's a strong stream of the apostolic here because of what is on the head and what has always been on the head. Starting at Bishop and coming all the way down to Pastor Carrick, there is a stream of the apostolic here that is designed to perfect what is lacking in your faith. Why? So you can be launched. Isn't that what Acts 13 was all about? We read that earlier. It was all about being launched, that the local church under the influence of an apostolic anointing would provide a launch pad. Not just for ministries, but for businesses. So that now from this space, you are launched into other industries, come on, for the purposes of taking over. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, the perfecting of your faith this morning is going to come through insight into what God is doing. One of the things that a teacher does, when you look up that word teacher in the New Testament, the Greek word there for teacher, it's also one of the root words that we get the word arrow from. Sometimes what the teaching anointing will do, it'll help you to take everything that you already know and help you aim. So that now when I pull back the arrow of the word to sling it at the mountain, it hits the right spot. It's not just me just kind of just, okay, I'm just going to say a bunch of things and just hope something comes out. No, that teaching anointing will come through the, from, from who is up here teaching, and it'll help you to kind of collect all of that and watch this. Now, intelligently and accurately, use your faith. And so, I became aware a few weeks ago. Y'all all right? I became a well, very well aware a few weeks ago. I was bumping up against something in prayer. Couldn't quite wrap words around it, but I was bumping up against something in prayer, and I knew that it was something trying to work its way into the nation, and I knew that the assignment that was behind it was to, was to spark mass panic and hysteria on the level of what COVID did. Now, I don't know if it's another disease. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I just, I would bump up against that in prayer, and I just kind of look at it like, well, Lord, what is that? What is that? I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to do with that. What is that? Just hold it up before the Lord. Well, I had a couple friends reach out and say something similar. I said, are you kidding anything? You know, I'm just sensing that there's some things coming, but I can't. I'm not getting insight into that. Do you have anything? I said, I don't have any more than you've got. I've been bumping against the same thing. Well, then the Lord spoke up on the inside, and he said, whatever is coming will require the supernatural to outrun it and outmaneuver it. He said, oh, yeah, there's something coming. He said, but you can outrun it, and you can outmaneuver it, with the supernatural. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4, it says that we've been delivered from the evils of this present world. So no matter what is trying to work in the land, God has already sent your deliverance. Your deliverance is present even before the evil shows up. So now we've got to be skilled skilled in the things of the Spirit so we can embrace the supernatural answers and solutions that he is providing. There were three things that he said to me about the supernatural. He said it's going to call for supernatural praying, supernatural ministry, and supernatural manifestations. Supernatural praying, supernatural ministry. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that. Supernatural praying, supernatural ministry, and supernatural manifestations. So in this season, it, you're going to have to learn, actually learn how to pray. You're going to have to take prayer serious enough to actually do it. 
Huh? You're going to have to take prayer seriously enough to actually do it because God wants to expand your capacity, watch this, to pray bigger. I said pray bigger. Pray bigger. There's some supernatural real estate acquisitions that need to take place among some of you in this room. 2024 holds some alarming movement in the areas of real estate. But if you are not awake and aware to the leading of the Spirit, if you're not awake and aware to the supernatural, you will miss opportunities to take the leap. Because these leaps are going to commission faith out of you. Praying bigger, praying longer. These are not the days for now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to come on saints. Praying longer. Expanding your capacity to pray out further in the spirit. Supernatural manifestations. You know, it was a supernatural manifestation that had me uproot my family out of Tennessee and moved to Houston, Texas. Didn't know anybody there. I mean, I knew where it was on the map, but that was about it. I mean, I knew it was hot, you know, but that's it. But God spoke to me one day driving home. It was like his presence came in the car and he said, don't buy a house here in Tennessee. I said, well, where else am I going to buy one? I mean, you know, y'all know how we do. You know, we've been renting, you know. My, my, well, praise the Lord. Don't judge me, you know. But my credit report was like a theme park. <laughs> and so you know how we do when it's, when it's time to buy. You know, you get, get everything paid off. And, you know, you get your little credit cards. And, you know, you pay that, pay that off. And you build your little credit, Right. So everything is ready. We had saved up some money, you know, down payment. Come on, FHA this, FHA that. We were ready to do some things. And the Lord says, nope, you are not to buy a home here. And I said, well, I guess I'll call the leasing office, tell them we'll do month to month until further notice. Because the Lord said not to buy a home here. A few months later, I was taking a shower. I'm talking about supernatural manifestations. And I'm giving you examples that are not in the pulpit because as preachers, I think we do people a disservice when all of our examples of the supernatural have to do with what happens here. I got to give you examples of how this works out there so you can see yourself in it. So I was taking a shower and, you know, my kids, you know, they're, they're, they're children and, you know, they, they, you have no privacy. No privacy. You know, it doesn't matter. You can lock the door and they're sending notes under the door. <laughs> fruit snacks, daddy, fruit snacks. Right? And now they're old enough now that they know how to unlock it from the outside. They just kind of twist the thing and they... Anyway, so I'm in the shower and all the parents said, amen. You know, I'm, I'm in the shower, you know, having my private time with the Lord and trying to hurry and get ready and go somewhere. And I felt like I heard someone come in the bathroom. So I just kind of waited to hear what the request was going to be. <laughs> right? No one said anything. So I just went back to showering, whatever. But I just, you ever, you ever noticed that you just, you can feel that like I am not alone. <laughs> right? And so I slick thought that my wife was trying to play a trick on me because sometimes, you know, she'll be in the shower and, you know, just being silly, I go get a cold cup of water and I throw it in there on her, you know. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is the big payback, huh? <laughs> so real dramatic as I can be, I just flung the shower curtain back like, yeah, you thought you was, no one was there. So I said, let me hurry up and get out of here, you know, for they really come in and do something. And when I closed the curtain, I heard this voice, and it was so loud on the inside. This voice said, I've been sent from the presence of God to tell you, settle your affairs, it's time to move. Now, I've seen angels before. This time, I didn't see this angel, but I felt the enormous presence 
of him in that bathroom. I've been sent from the presence of God to tell you to settle your affairs. It's time to move. So we have the voice of God. We have divinely granted appearances. But here's this third one here. Later on, a couple weeks later, as I was praying, I saw the word Houston come up in my spirit. And it just, it's like somebody dropped a, a quarter in a vending machine. It was like, that's it. That's where we're supposed to go. That's where we need to be. And I remember I, I told my wife about it and she looked at me. She looked at me like I was afflicted. She said, Houston, do we even know anybody in Houston? I said, I know, I know, I know, but it's, it's right. It's right. So I said, well we'll, well, we'll just prepare to go to Houston. Months later, the Spirit of God came on me and he said, you're moving too slow. You need to get to Houston as fast as you can. Well, he said that, and within a year, we were in Houston. Closed on our dream home, and we got in there right before the market went crazy, so we moved in with equity. You know, got a great rate. Everybody talking about 6% now and all this kind of stuff. Our rate wasn't even 3%, so, you know, we, we just, you know, hey, man, praise the Lord. And I thought, well, yes, that, that's why you wanted us to come to Houston. The Lord goes before us. We got a great deal. Hallelujah. Amen. Didn't know that three months later I would be diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And the number one cancer clinic in the world is within 30 minutes of my home. There's evil coming in the land, but if you'll yield to the supernatural, you'll outrun it and outmaneuver it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Not just faith to receive, but faith to follow. Supernatural praying, supernatural manifestation, and I want to stop here. Supernatural ministry. Supernatural ministry. In these days, God is adding equipment to ministries. He is adding additional help, additional supplies to ministries. I think about that scripture over in Hebrews where, over I believe it's in chapter 2, where he says, God bearing witness with gifts of the Spirit and divine workings of his mighty power, I believe is what the Amplified Version says. There's a word there that it could be translated as in the margin, distributions of the Spirit. Another translation says this, miraculous faculties. Hmm? I remember I heard my mother say one time while we were, we were small and we would ask her to do certain things and, you know, I'm the oldest of five and so we'd be asking mom to do this, mom to do that. And she goes, I only have two arms. I only have two arms. Well, the picture that the Greek paints of these distributions of the spirit is like God adding an additional appendage to you. Extra ability to do supernatural things. That's what God is doing for ministries. That's what God is doing for Pastor Carrick. There's some brokove, le fraudale stele l'amore. Thank you, Lord. There's some additional equippings that are coming to Pastor Carrick that is going to enable him and this plan and you to cover more ground in less time. There will be churches that will be planted in record time in record time and the growth will be explosive you'll move into a place and there'll already be no more room and you'll say to the Lord Lord we just spent this amount of money to get this place ready and we've already outgrew it he says well you've been warned you've been warned there is mass movement in the direction of this plan in the area of people, in the area of resources, but also in the area of power. To so where you would pastor with the quality of the Christ. 
He is the good shepherd. He's always been the good shepherd, would always be the good shepherd. But he will give you, anybody ever watched the movie with, what's the man's name, Liam, Liam Neeson? You know, and that, that famous quote, he says, I, I have uh, an interesting collection of skills accumulated over a period of time. God is imparting to you a very unusual collection of skills. And it's going to empower this plan in a way that it hasn't been empowered before. It wasn't in 93, it wasn't in 2003, it wasn't in 2013. But this power, this equipment has been held off for these days and for this era. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so help has come and help will continue to come. And so I have, I have instructions here. We're going to follow this, and uh, then we'll just see what the Spirit of God will say. But I've got it on me this morning here um, to, to minister to ministers. I want to minister to ministers and to department heads. So those of you that are in ministry and then those of you that lead a department at this church, I want you to come up here, and I'm going to minister to you. Hallelujah. Let's move quick. Let's move quick so we can move on and see what else the Spirit of God has to say. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And I need to paprocole penbra, talamina, invasa, foste, paprikabo, infinita, lu, mastopra, lefraba. As a tone, Now concerning the families of faith, I will give you great grace to run a very big race. And I will give you insight into the ways and the purposes of my very own self. Things that I have ordained for you and things that I've ordained for those that I gave you. And you will parent supernaturally. I will give you strategies and I will give you blueprints for their rearing. And I will tell you to go left and you will go left. And I will tell you to go right and you will go right. And in doing so, you will lead those that I have given you under your tutelage as children. You will lead them into all that is right in my sight. So take confidence, take courage. Because the days are evil and these days do not offer it to you. But you can take it. You can take it, you can see it, and you can say it. And if you'll say it, and if you'll believe it, with me and the workings of my mighty power, I'll put you over in it. So supernatural increase comes, so all these things that I've authored in your heart can be done to the glory of the Son. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for that. Oh, my, 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 my. And the stories that will be told. The stories that will be told. The stories that will be told. The stories that will be told of the wonders of his work in this place. My, 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 my. Go ahead and lift your hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to do me a favor. Do your best to stand. When I lay hands on you, the power of God is going to come on you. And I want you to do your best to soak that in, soak that in, soak that in, soak it in. Hallelujah. Because it is just a foretaste of what is going to come on you as you begin. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's more, 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 more to do. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I've got you here. Yeah, more to do, more to see, more to be. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, working, working with you. Yeah, and he'll, he'll work with you. He'll work with you. He'll work with you, and he'll work with you too. Yeah, yeah, workings of his mighty power. My, I'm going to stay with you. I'm here with you. Mm-hmm. And ooh, my, my. Masole tele frabatasta and a frabatasta and a frabatasta stone ace and a stone ace stone and a brogo who who masis si 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dreams to come true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much glory for you. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great days. Great days. Who? Who? Ha, ma, 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 ma. It's in your belly. It's in your belly. It's in your belly. Yeah. And a stole breast us, stay for us, 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 us. It's us, Tomori. Yeah. Who? Ma, 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 sole stole break, evo sa, counsel in the heart. In a mastobore, yeah. Oh, ways of abiding. Yeah. Seeing and knowing. Yeah. It's a flow. It's a flow. It's a flow. You know it. You know it. You know it. You know it. You know him better than you think you do. Ha. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. More, 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 more. More, more, more. More, more, more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brighter, brighter, brighter day, brighter days, brighter days. So pick up the pace. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a maromo stele ba praguma. Let him ona. Let him ona. Let him ona. And what you permit, he will allow, and he will put you over into it, even though you say how. Yeah. It'll be right and it'll be good because he will solution you, yeah, to move even in your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, rightness, right, rightness, rightness of your very own self. The rightness of your very own self, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is that everyone? We have more. Is that everyone? Okay, let's let these vacate up here. If you can find a seat, let's get the other ones here. Hallelujah. Whew. The rest of you, y'all can, can come up here. The rest of the ministers and department heads, if I didn't get you, let's do that. I've got one more selection, one more group here. Whoa, that I need to minister to. Oh, my, my, my. My, 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 my. And there will be clean hands on the plan. Clean hands, clean hands, clean hands, clean hands. And you will discern your part. And the Spirit will show you where to start. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so impartations for, whoa, whoa, whoa. Impartations for new day, new day, new day, new, new for you. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. This is not news though. You've known it in your heart. You just didn't know how, Lord, will I get all that's in my heart out? But he is the keeper of your heart and everything and everybody in your heart. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I use you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the truth, in the truth, in the truth, in the truth. Revelations coming off the page. Yeah impartations of his truth he will lead you thank you lord yeah and it's so yeah 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 i don't know what that is but i curse that that's trying to track him i curse that thank you father yeah yeah and it'll not come back thank you, father. hallelujah thank you. as you keep his body his mind and his heart thank you. hallelujah Greater expectations. Greater expectations. Oh, my, my, my. I got you. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More to do. More to do. More to do. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, 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 my. Yeah, 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 you're just getting started. Just getting started. 
Yeah, just getting started in the things of the Spirit now. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. He'll get in your feet and you'll go, 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 go. Traveling shoes, traveling shoes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, with greater grace, greater grace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you've seen the possibility and you've said a how. No, 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 it's not how. No, it's now. So set your hand to the plow. Get in your row and don't walk. Nope. Run, 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 run with what you know to do. And then the Spirit will bring additional truth to you. Hallelujah. Now, the shift here is that everybody, that's all the leaders. Okay, I need entrepreneurs. Get up here now. Entrepreneurs, get up here now. If you own a business, get up here now. Now, 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 now. Hallelujah. Phew, I got to get this off of me here. Come on, come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. I hear this increase in favor is in here like electricity. Yeah, if you'll pull on the anointing, I'm telling you, impartations for increase and faith. Impartations for increase and favor to do what you couldn't do before. My God, Steve. Stay, 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 stay. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my, 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 my. And you'll go, 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 go. Yeah, 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 yes. Ooh, my sata. Yeah. And the spirit of wisdom to do it right this time. Yes, yes, yes. And the boldness to do it. It is time. Oh, my, 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 my. Increase in favor rest on you. Increase in favor rest on you. Increase in witty inventions and innovative ideas. Opportunities. In two. Hallelujah. Is that all the business owners? If I haven't ministered to you, come on down. Whoa. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's a movement. It's a movement. Phew, we were moving quick. If I missed you, come on back over here. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Y'all come down. Come down. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, and so insight and wisdom, revelation, you will see what he will do through you in manufacturing new, 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 new. It's not over. Ha, 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 ha. Come on, every hand lifted, every hand lifted. Come on, let's draw and pull on heaven. Hallelujah. You all can take your seats. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just thank him for the help. There's help in the room. Come on, there's help in the room. We move from moments like this too fast. We need to let the spirit of wisdom and revelation manifest to you individually. Hallelujah. 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 Funeral homes. Funeral home businesses in here. In here. Who is that? Who is that? Who has who is that? That's got a funeral. You have a funeral home, or maybe you're in training for a funeral home. Or maybe you, I don't know. There's something about funeral homes here. Who is that? Is that her? Uh, and it'll be easier than you thought. It'll be easier than you thought. It'll be easier than you thought. It'll be easy. It'll be easy. It'll be easy. It'll be easy. 
Thank you, Lord. It's here. You just got to pick it up. You just got to pick it up. You pick it up the same way Elisha did. And he said, where is the God of Elijah? If he did it before, he can do it again. If God ever did it, he can do it again. So why not you? Come on. Come on, say that. Why not me? Why not me? Why not me? Somebody got to be healed. Why not me? Somebody got to be rich. Why not me? Somebody's got to experience promotion. Why not me? Somebody's got to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Why not me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, one more time. Lift that hand. Come on, we worship you, Lord, the Christ, our Lord. Hands uplifted, hearts open wide to receive big from you. In this space, in this presence, we decide to abide. And your presence will be our dwelling place. Hallelujah. And your presence, Lord, will be our dwelling place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Garrick, I think I'm clear. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. En ganda gester in den Rind in die Bunga. A Bosch die da, a Bosch die da. Für jetzt an den Dingsten dann gleste dete. En oh, so da la mangi die duns in den Ding in den En in sindum bondan zan dan ding gong gang ging aha. En aha, oh, ramba, satere so ho se ha. So do not say that it is too late. But please understand that this is the hour and the day. For the miraculous belongs to you. My very own son died and got out of the grave to distribute that miraculous to you. So set your expectation on high. Set your expectation on high. Set your expectation on high for the flow of miracles that is coming your direction will not just come to your bodies, but it will come to your bank accounts. It will come to your investment portfolios. It will come and it will meet you in the marketplace. It will meet you in the media spaces. It will meet you in entertainment. It will meet you in politics and it will, yes, meet your churches too. So open your heart and open your heart wide for I am the author and the finisher. I always finish what I start. So this is the set day. This is your designated time. This is your moment. So rejoice, rejoice and rejoice some more for these are the days where freedom and liberty flows to you. These are the days when greater demonstrations of power and demonstrations of my very own spirit come to you. And I will tell you what to do. I will lead and guide you into the truth. And I will bring a flow of the miraculous to you that you've not seen since my son walked the earth. And through your hands, you will open doors. Through your hands, you will open portals. And through your hands, you will find yourself in spaces and in places that you never knew were there. So take confidence, take courage, take confidence and take courage because I called you, I anointed you, and yes, I am sending you. That's what the Spirit is saying. Come on, rejoice, come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice, come on, rejoice. Come on, rejoice, come on, rejoice. Hallelujah. Seems like it's a little more in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Dathan, get a mic ready. And I will set up both the games, darling. And it shall be a no zindongam bonzi dandi. And in a dish, and in a dish, and in a dish, jiju, ju, zo, 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 and it will flow rebangansata, and andasoto, and then it will be brushti ki, brandata, jel and bonson kora, ha, ha, and o remamandera, ha, 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 and o rabaha, ha, 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 
Hilere ha 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 and Rosere ha 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 and so there will be a restoration of all things I will restore the ministry of the Spirit to you and among you. And you will see the gift of the Spirit begin to operate among you on a level that you have been unfamiliar with heretofore. You will see astonishing demonstrations of the Spirit. You will see miraculous things happening among you. Creative miracles. Creative miracles in your midst where things are removed and things are planted. For the angelic realm will come to bear on your gatherings. The angelic realm will come to bear on your assembling so open your heart wide expect big get in the flow and he'll cause you to know and you'll see and you'll know what your part is and how it is you are to flow and so the songs of heaven will fill your midst the utterances of heaven will fill your midst the flows of the heavenlies will fill your midst and it will correct and it will adjust it will even shift things in you and shift things in your local economy too so don't doubt but just begin to shout because in this day I will bring faith out without a doubt ho, 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 ho. yeah 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 and so with great grace he says to you the leaders in this place it is time to pick up your pace. Move, move, move is what the Spirit says to you. Move, move, move is what he is saying to you. Don't question. Don't be found as opposition. But position yourself to be answers and solutionists. For in these days there is a fa 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 there is a flow of creativity that will flow through you that will fuel and enhance and enhance what I've given your set man to do. Hallelujah. 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 If I were you, I would put my hands out. If I were you, I, yeah, 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 I'd put my hands out. I put my hands out because there are resources coming. Resources are in the room. Resources are in the room. Resources of anointing, but resources for money too. Oh yeah, he'll use you, he'll use you, he'll use you, 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 you. Now Dathan, I want you to sing this out, but we're gonna pick up the pace on this. These are the days of power. 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 Yeah. These are the days of power. Yeah. Yeah. These are the days of power. Yes, they are. These are the days of power. These are the days of power. Yeah, yeah. These are the days of power. Oh, these are the days of power. The days of power. Days of power. These are the days of power. The days of power. Days of power, we gain our strength in the days of power. We gain our strength now. Days of power, come on, say, these are the days of power. You say, these are the days of power. These are the days of power. Say, these are the days of power. These are the days of power. The days of power, days of power, run up with wings, days, days of power, we fight like an eagle, days of power, we we'll run and not get weary, days of power, we we'll walk and not faint, days of power, in the days of power, days of power, in the days of power, days of power, our weakness is made, days of power, into strength, days of power, in the days of power. You said these are the days. 
this divine portal of favor and I heard the Lord say this put in the contracts now for property put in the contracts now whether it's your house or, or apartment buildings investment properties there is a portal of favor open for you to get properties at a fraction of the cost of what it should cost and then I also saw gold I saw gold and, and I heard acquisition. So whatever that means, gold acquisition. Look into gold acquisition. There might be favor there. That might be something that you're supposed to acquire, but gold acquisition. But I heard the Lord saying that divine favor for property acquisition. And specifically, put in the contract. I receive it. 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 It belongs to me. I receive it. It belongs to me. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Everything that's mine. I receive it. I receive it. Go acquisition.
Thank you for streaming this message. I believe it encourages you and is going to help you make Jesus famous in your everyday life. We would love to be stay connected with you. So subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, download our Faith Plus app, and visit us at FCCGA.com to learn more about our ministry. If you would like to support our ministry financially, you can also do so by our website at FCCGA.com or by texting FCCGA to 73256. If you would like to submit a prayer request, you can do so at our website as well. We would love to agree with you in faith and we know you'll receive an answer according to the word of God. Once again, thank you for streaming this message. And remember, God has a great plan for your life and something good is going to happen to you today. So expect miracles. God bless.